Good morning, everyone. It is Monday morning and it's May. We are getting closer to those fun summer months with a little more temperate weather and an opportunity to get outside and enjoy things here in the Midwest. If you live in climates where it's warm or hot all year round, we're very excited here and we can't wait to get outdoors with you. Today is extra exciting. Last week, we had people come, Hutchins, and shout out to Hutchins. They're a fantastic company. So thank you for, um, for the solid work you're doing for us. But Hutchins came and they pulled out all of the chewed up yucky concrete we had in our driveway and put down uh, gravel. They widened our driveway and put down a new surface out there. They buried the sump pump line and they took out our front steps and are here right now pouring the concrete so we can have a nicer place to step out of our home. You don't have to open the door and just step down, but you can step out and then walk out. They're going to be fantastic. But I'm so nosy and it's hard for me to stay inside while they're out there pouring the cement. But it's probably best for everyone if I just do my thing and let them do their thing. Which... Let me introduce myself. Most of you know me, some may not. My name is Melissa Ebkin, and I'm the pastor of the Christian churches in Iliopolis in Niantic, Illinois. I'm the founder of Light Life and Love Ministries, and that's an outreach for those who are spiritual but not religious, or who have a faith but don't have church. I'm also the host of the podcast, Pursuing Uncomfortable where we encourage people to lean into the difficult and uncomfortable situations and experiences of life so they can overcome them. And we feature stories of folks who have done just that. Today, I want to talk to you about comfort zones. I'm really excited about this topic. After 20 plus years in ministry, I've come to notice some patterns and to see some experiences that people have had and I want to share with you how leaning into some difficult things, maybe stretching our comfort zones a bit, can truly benefit us in our lives. When you think of expanding your comfort zone, some people think that means going and jumping out of a plane or zip lining. It can. It certainly can. And if that's your thing, go for it. Go for it. To some people, it might mean learning a new language. It might mean overcoming their, their fear of public speaking. And if so, go for it. Absolutely go for it. For others, and this is where I think that we can really experience a change in our lives and our quality of life. The comfort zone exists within ourselves in the space that we share in relationships with other people. Let me be more specific. It is hard to get through life without being hurt and without being the one who hurts someone. We are imperfect people doing the best we can. And a lot of times along the way, things get misunderstood or misinterpreted or maybe not. And we just have some breakdown in communications and relationships. It's hard to have those conversations and repair those things especially if it's a generational thing that's handed down to us. If it's a generational cutoff that we're experiencing, it can be particularly difficult. But the most dramatic and transforming acts that I have been a witness to and have supported people to do have been healing those things inside ourselves and in their relationships with their family and friends. It is hard work. It might be the hardest work. Forgiveness is a complex tool, complex in that it requires several different steps and difficulties along the way. But when we can forgive ourselves and others, when we are willing to sit in that uncomfortable space of anxiety and fear of judgment and fear of rejection. When we can sit in that space with ourselves and with other people, 
golly, it just opens the door to so much possibility, so much healing, and so much opportunities to, to re-engage and to revitalize relationships. So that's where I would invite you today. I want to invite you this week, this entire month, all of May, I'm going to be talking about repair and redeeming those relationships that are strained or difficult. I'm going to be talking about leaning into those uncomfortable conversations, but I'm also going to be giving you tools to do that. I'm going to be helping you to and supporting you as you do those things. So what I want you to think about today and this week, I don't want you necessarily to take any action. If you're ready, go for it. But just to get our toes wet this week, I want you to identify a relationship that isn't what you hoped it would be, or maybe stressed a little bit. And I want you to identify your fears about approaching that or healing that. So pick out a relationship in your life that you would like to be a better relationship. Maybe it's strained however it's straight, it doesn't matter, but pick out one relationship, make a list of your fears, make a list of what makes you anxious about that, and let's just start there. So that's the, the call to action this week. And in the comments, I invite you to list things that make you uncomfortable, even if it's something you would never do. For me, it's a cruise. I know people take cruises all the time, right? But I don't want to take a cruise. I don't want to be on a boat. If there's a case of intestinal flu that comes around, I just, it makes me so anxious, the thought of being on a boat, I don't want to take a cruise. Now, if I'm on that cruise ship all by myself, or I can handpick a dozen or less people to be on the ship, great, let's do that. But a ship with thousands of people on it, not for me. That's my thing. So am I going to do something about that? I don't know. I may someday. Right now it's not pressing. But I will tell you something I am working on that has been giving me a lot of anxiety and it's going to be a tremendous accomplishment for me. I've mentioned it before. You may have talked to me about it. But I have this fear and this tremendous anxiety about singing in public. I know, every Sunday. I get it. I hear what you're saying, but it's different when we're singing in church. Everybody's singing. It's about the hymn that we're singing, or it's about the grocery list that's going through our minds while we're singing this hymn that's not our favorite, whatever. It's not the same thing. I had an experience once in high school where I got I let my nerves get the best of me and I did poorly in a contest and my teacher told me to never sing in public again, to never sing in front of people. That tape has been playing in my mind ever since. And even in church singing, I break out in a cold sweat, I get nervous, my voice trembles a little bit, and it's time to get rid of that. So, yes, I have been taking voice lessons. I have engaged Miss B. And if you're local here, you know all about Miss B. And I have been taking voice lessons from her and I'm going to do it. I'm going to go for it. On Sunday, May, let me see, May 15th, the Sunday after Mother's Day, I'm going to do it. I'm going to sing a solo in church when worship is done. I'm going to put myself out there. I'm getting all anxious thinking about it, but it's something that I need out of my life. I need that fear out of my life. And then once I do it in one church, I'm going to do it in the other church. And then who knows, maybe I'll do another song or another solo, but I want that fear gone. I want that anxiety out of my life and I'm going to lean into it and I'm going to overcome it and I'll report back here how it all went. So anyway, when I visualize it in my mind, and I do that a lot because there's so much to be gained through visualization exercises, it goes beautifully. So I look forward to reporting back on that one. But this week, I want you to think about 
the relationship that has some stress in your life. I want you to think about the relationship that causes you anxiety. And if you're ready to do something about it, great. If you want support, great, reach out. I will support you in that. But right now, I want you to identify it and I want you to write down a few things about it that's causing you anxiety. And next week, we'll take another step. So that's my wish for you this week. Lean into the difficult things. If you want support leaning into the difficult things, call me, direct message me, send me an email. I'd love to support you. And that's all for now. Bye, friends.